How are you guys doing today? So we're going to look at, uh, again, Swift, but this time again with Mac OS X, and how would we use uh, radio buttons. So just have a simple window here. I'm going to drag uh, a group of radio buttons on screen. And so you start off with two, and up here you can see that there's uh, what they call matrix, and they call the radio button cells. So if I click on this, it... Oops. Let's bring it to screen. You can see it has multiple radio buttons. And they have things called columns, so you can actually have multiple columns of radio buttons for uh, Xcode. Most development tools really just come with, when you do radio buttons, <coughs> excuse me, uh, really just have one row of them. So for ours, we're just going to do one row. And to edit them, like if you want to add um, some value in them, you just double click on this cell here. And so let's just put in like something in each one of these. So we'll say like one, two, three, and we'll type in four. So we'll just put some numbers in there. You can pretty much put whatever you like in there and we can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we have our radio button group up here. And so how programmably, how would we uh, do something? So let's say that we're going to display something into a text field when we click on these. So let's just bring up a simple text field. And let's just kind of put that on screen here. And we're not going to get any fancy with any of this stuff. And let's just make this so... The behavior is just a readable text field. And to program this, and let's get rid of this extra stuff we don't need here. So let's just set up a couple outlets for on the text field here. And we'll call it uh, field result. And then let's also set up an outlet for this group here. And let's call it literally a group of radios. So let's call it group radios. And you can tell it uh, brings up something called an NS matrix. And that's basically how you tell um, what radio is selected. Um, it's a matrix of items. It's a matrix of cells. You could do this in a lot of different ways. But I'm going to show you basically the most simplest way through uh, using a matrix. So we can actually grab this and bring it down here and create an action. And we'll call it, well, let's call it group, since it is a group of radio buttons. I'll call it radio pick. And that'll create an action for us. And then we can determine excuse me again, uh, which radio is selected. So if you select, if you go kind of like Google search this for Mac, you won't find anything. For iOS, you'll find tons and tons and tons of stuff, but um, there's not a lot of information for Swift and radio buttons. For Objective-C, there's a ton of stuff, but not too much for Swift. So that's why I want to kind of go over this. Um, it's not as hard as you think it is, but it's really hard to find information. So... What we need to do is determine which one of these radio buttons has been selected and when one thing is selected, do an action. So we can create a variable for this. We'll say var and let's call it my radio role. And like I said before, oops, my, my radio role. And we want to make this uh, an integer. So we'll give it an int value. And that will be equal to our group. And we called that thing up on top here, group radios. So basically, we're taking this outlet that we named up here. And I'm just going to copy and paste it down here. And we are looking for a value of selected row. So let's just start typing selected and you can see there's a number of things that start coming up here but we want 
is the selected row and actually it should be selected with ED and as you can see now as I did that there's selected row right there and this here should return our radio group selected row and I see an error there the error is actually because the int should be capitalized so you have to definitely make sure uh, when you're working with Swift um, stuff is definitely case sensitive so you can see our error went away now we only have one column here um, here, here's something interesting um, you know there could be multiple columns here um, and if there was multiple columns you could do something to get that too so let me just show you that even though we don't have multiple columns here so I'll just say var my radio column again we'll do an int and again we'll do group radios it's actually this one right here dot and it's almost exactly the same except for row we're looking for column and as you can see right here selected column so that would return what column the thing is typed in now everything in uh, radio buttons is zero based so the first item over here where it says one would be zero uh, that would be one two and three so it'd be three items since we really only have one column we really don't need that for this particular one so I'm going to comment that up now how would we uh, know which one is selected well we can do basically by using this variable that we set up it's going to return which row has been selected and for that then we can just use something as like a switch statement and then say my radio row and it'll switch the radio row and then we need these little curly brackets to make our switch statement so we'll have to say case and since it's zero based the first item would be zero oops and we need this one right here so let's just put a little message here that this would be one and again let's do case one and let's put a little note here this is two then case two oops and that's number three and finally case three and that will be four and the switch statement on this really likes to have a default now there's not really any reason there should be a default necessary for uh, this radio button because there's really not uh, any way that you could not select one of these values but Swift on this really likes to have a default so I just put a simple uh, print in and that should be capitalized there and I print in basically nothing um, so here is where, and the reason these uh, come up as showing um, that there potentially is an error is it likes to actually have all the code present, all the actions present within each one of these case statements <clears throat> before it removes itself. So we're going to take this field here, and we called it right here field result. So we'll just say field result dot string value equals and we'll put some quotes there and let's actually take that and just copy and paste this in each one of these case statements. Let's put a nil statement in there. Is it not like? Well, here we can actually just put 
We could actually just put this in. We could just say it's empty. Uh, it's never really going to fire this default because it's always going to be those values. And we can just type in 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. And when the first one is selected, uh, when we first run this, there's not going to be anything actually in the field. So we could either put uh, 1 in if we know 1 is going to be started. Or what we could do is when the app first launches, we could actually tell it what radio button we wanted uh, starting off. Like say if we wanted to actually say start with 2. So let's put it in starting value. So let's first do our radio button. So for our radio button, what we have to do is call our, what we called it up here, group radios, and I'll just copy and paste it. So group radios, and what we have to do is say selected, or actually select is what we want, select cell at roll, and this is actually what we want. So we have to give it a roll number, for this and our role is actually going to be zero and then we have to give it a column number and for this particular one our column is zero so column zero zero um so the first one one so but we wanted to say maybe our starting value should be our starting value should be two so if it's going to be two we would have to set this actually to one and if that's the fact then what we'd want to do is say field result dot string value and let's give it a starting value of two so when we launch it it should start up selecting two and that so this right here is basically how you tell it what value you would want it it programmably and down here this is how you would get what the user had selected and it would run the action. In this case, it would just put a string in this text value. So let's try it. And it's going to launch here. OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. OK, and now it's starting to come up on screen. And you can see it started off with 2, and it had put 2 in the field. We select 1 three four so you can see as we switch around it is switching the value of the field and it's doing exactly what we want it to um, and we could actually just go maybe add one other thing here to show you uh, again how you could set it so like maybe you would have a button uh, part of your project to maybe reset the default of something or change a value of something so let's say Let's make this one. We want four. Okay. Well, should maybe capitalize that. Or just make it like a sentence. We want four. Okay. So let's take this uh, particular button we just made here and let's drag it down here. Let's create an action. Our button select four. Okay, so we can basically do the same kind of thing here. So if we wanted to have a button or something else that uh, you could, your user could press, and based upon pressing that, it would change the radio value. We do very, basically, we do the same thing here. We'd grab like what we did here, and you just put it down here. Um, well, remember, it's zero base, so zero, one, two, three. So we'd have to put roll, we'd put three, and since there's only one column, column is zero. Okay, so let's try that. So let's rebuild. And let's select four. Now you notice it did select four, but it did not change our value in the field. So we could actually do that here. Field result dot string value.
equals four. And let's try that again. Let's stop that. And let's run it again. And boom, it just selects four. Or you can select again through it, again. So that's very simply how you would programmably uh, interact with radio buttons, either determining which one the user selected or forcing uh, a new highlighted radio button by code. It's pretty simple. And so I'm just going to go back and show you the code one more time so you can look at it. Um, again, we just created some basic outlets up here. We did have a starting value here, which is basically the same as the button that we did down here. And again, this was our code to find out which one of the buttons was switched based upon the variable that we selected here of uh, the selected row. And again, you can do the same thing with columns. So if you have multiple columns, you could put an if statement in here saying if there's more than some column or if column zero or column one or column two is selected and then do your statements between those if statements. It's pretty simple. So thanks for joining and I hope you learned something new and uh, have fun and make some really cool Swift Mac based apps. Thank you again.